after finishing my undergraduate degree in the Philippines, I moved to the U.S., to New York, to pursue a master's in business, actually, at NYU. And, you know, but that was in media and entertainment because I wanted to, you know, I'm an aspiring filmmaker, but I also wanted to get a handle on the business side of things. And I ended up, you know, interning for companies like Focus Features. And then shortly after that, like I worked for a media company and then decided, you know what, I want to make a movie now. So I made a short with um, some experienced like film professionals and film types. Although, you know, I only made the short really as a proof of concept for a feature film. So I expanded the short, uh, which played in a number of international festivals like Vancouver into my first uh narrative feature called Senorita and that one premiered at the Locarno International Film Festival in Switzerland. Excellent. Yeah. How was it received? Um, it was received well, well enough that I was able to make my follow-up feature okay. the next year. It's interesting because at that point I'd already moved to New York but I actually went back to the Philippines to shoot my first two features. Oh, for real? Yeah. Lingua Franca is turning out to be quite a calling card project for me. You know, it's not... It doesn't have the budget of a Marvel movie, you know, not at all, but I wanted it to showcase what I can do as a director and to show that I have a distinct, you know, voice and sensibility and hopefully, you know, producers in Hollywood would notice that. I come up with stories and narratives about characters that on the surface seem very foreign and, you know, from my own personal experience because I want to broaden my horizons as an artist and as a filmmaker like my second feature apparition was about cloistered catholic nuns living in a monastery in the middle of the woods you know yeah. and apart from the fact that i went to a catholic school i'm not a nun i've never lived in the woods but it's interesting to ima imagine you know what kind of lives they led of course i did some research you know with nuns but I think, yeah, it's just far more interesting for me creatively to kind of travel psychologically yeah. to those kinds of new spaces. Yeah. That's excellent. Is that just a matter of, of, of uh, dreaming stream of conscious or are you out in the world looking for characters, looking for stories, looking, you know? Um, I think for me as a filmmaker, I want to come up with stories that are both unique, you know, and also have a style and sensibility that's just distinctive and unique to me as well. You know, um, I think a lot of the directors that we've come to know as auteurs have a certain signature, whether it's the kind of stories that they do, the kind of characters that they write, the art direction, production design, like Wes Anderson, mm -hmm. for instance, you know, Tarantino and his, you know, the kinds of characters and dialogue that they have so that, you know, for the, when, audiences see my film after the first minute they will know it is my film what advice would you give to someone who's struggling writing because you know at least the movie that i saw is like just picking these moments these powerful moments yeah. so what advice would you give to someone who's struggling to find the or, or maybe has so many ideas and not sure what to pick yeah i mean you know for me you know just based on my own personal experience what i wanted to do especially as i was starting out was like because you're constantly kind of debating internally whether you want to make a film that was that's going to be commercial and make a lot of money or do you want to do something that's really distinctly and uniquely your own that might be low budget and i think you know for me i wanted to be able to establish myself through film festivals and get the attention of you know potential producers and production companies collaborators and what festival programmers are looking for are distinct and unique voices and sens sensibilities and aesthetic. Technical mastery or sophistication is not as important to them, but if they feel like as a filmmaker you have something unique and different to say than the others, they will program you, you know. So it's better to stand out yeah. and sometimes making a film that's very unique and, you know, risky and bold and provocative means working with a shoestring budget yeah. then you know by all means you know do that because that's how aronofsky started with pie 
Yeah. For instance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's excellent. I mean, it's like like at the end of the day, there's no rules, right? Exactly. Follow your own philosophy. Yeah, and as an independent filmmaker, you know, they know that you don't necessarily have, you know, the best resources, but all you have that you can showcase in the film is your talent Mm -hmm. and your creativity. And if, you know, you're able to make the film that you want you know without without any compromises and it turns out and it you know introduces you as a talent to watch out for it and 